Many consider the early days of 1942 to be Britain's darkest hour. The debacle in Singapore had come on the back of a string of stunning defeats. And for a nation brought up believing in the invincibility of its navy, they had watched on in horror as Allied merchantmen were sunk faster than they could be replaced. So Britain depended heavily on the Atlantic convoys that were going back and forth between Britain and the United States. And there were two main threats to the Atlantic convoys. One were the U-boats. That was the biggest threat. But behind them was the German surface fleet, and particularly their four major battleships. Particularly threatening were the ultra-modern sister ships Bismarck and Tirpitz, two extremely fast super battleships, both considered far too powerful for British or American battleships to engage alone. Now, the Bismarck had been positioned to raid against the Atlantic convoys, but on her first raid out, the Royal Navy had managed to, at great cost, sink the Bismarck. But now, British intelligence feared that the Tirpitz would be relocated so that she could take over that role of raiding the Atlantic convoys. Anticipating the havoc the Tirpitz could wreak if let loose, and desperate for any small victory, the British conceived Operation Chariot, a daring plan to discourage the deployment of the Tirpitz by destroying her only refuge, the French port of Saint-Nazaire. Saint-Nazaire's dry dock was the only one in Western Europe capable of accommodating a ship of her size. But very early on, it became obvious that to lay sufficient charges by hand to significantly damage the dock would take far too long. And so an audacious alternative was decided upon. The plan that they came up with was to take an old First World War destroyer, pack it full of explosives, and ram it into the dock gate and then blow it up that way. Saint-Nazaire was heavily defended, and so a great deal of time was put into remodeling the ship, the HMS Campbelltown, to make it appear like a German destroyer. Three tons of explosives to be detonated by time delay fuses were encased in the ship's bow and sealed off with concrete. A force of 200 commandos would also be aboard, tasked with destroying as much of the dock infrastructure as possible. The attack took place on the night of the 28th of March, and the Campbelltown, German flag fluttering on her mast, managed to sail within sight of the target before the confused German defenders opened fire. It was too late. The Campbelltown was wedged into the gates of the dry dock, and the commandos set about their work. After little more than 15 minutes, the docks were ablaze, and with most of their support craft destroyed, the commandos fought their way into the city, where many were either captured or killed. Twelve hours later, at midday on the 29th, the charges in the Campbelltown's bow exploded, killing as many as 600 Germans and, importantly, rendering the dock unusable for the rest of the war. Operation Chariot is sometimes referred to as the greatest raid of all, uh, and it certainly was successful in achieving its objectives. But it came at an incredible cost. Almost two-thirds of the force that carried out the raid were either killed or captured. So it was an enormously costly operation. It did, however, have the intended effect. Tirpitz never did relocate from her base in Norway, and so the Atlantic convoys were protected from that potential threat. Aside from achieving the immediate goals, the raid occurred at a time when Churchill desperately needed a success to boost military and civilian morale. Operation Chariot not only restored the faith of Britain's civilian population, but dragged her armed forces out of a dangerously defensive mindset and reignited their offensive spirit in preparation for the long fight that lay ahead. <laughs> 